come often reached the shores of Holsteinsburg, population 2,000. For the injured and ill, here there is a hospital. But for the Portuguese fishermen, a mystifying and frightening experience. He does not speak English. They do not speak Portuguese. He cannot tell them where it hurts. The doctor cannot tell him what is wrong. Hello. Do you speak English? No, I speak English. Not at all. Uh, do you speak um, Compreno or um, Conte? No. No Conte. So Portuguese. So. Stomaco Lego Grande. 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 E grande. Compreno? Compreno. Grande. Grande. Upcast Leon. Upcast Leon. Vomitus. 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 Not a vomit. Ten line. No anamic? Diagnosis by pantomime. Language barriers reducing the practice of medicine to a primitive form. Here, the emotional discomfort can grow as painful as the malady. By tone of voice alone, the doctor recognizes the question, what is to become of me? You will be flown to another hospital in Denmark. Do you understand? No. I do not understand. Strange food, strange language, and a pain he cannot describe. Frightening is the realization that in a two-mile trip from sea to shore, he has left his own country and become stranded in a foreign land. Even on board the Jose Alberto can the strangeness of this country be felt. Shrouded by fog, life comes to a standstill. The exuberant voices of yesterday, today stilled to a whisper. Without warning, it descended. And if the temperament of Greenland is cruel, it might stay for days. Had they their way, many of the men would go out. But Captain Silva knows they would be lost. All there is to do is wait, frustrated over the unproductive hours thinking always of more days away from home. For an instant, the sea grows calmer. The fog seems to lift. In desperation, Silva gives the signal to fish. They know their captain is in doubt. But if they never fished when there was doubt, they would never fill their hold. Still, today is voluntary. Those who do not wish to enter the water will not be made to. For the first time, they go in groups risking entanglement of lines for the safety in numbers. Should they become lost so close to the magnetic North Pole, their compasses will deceive them. And among their boats, there is not one life jacket, one rudder, or even an extra day's provision of food. The cold
cod, too, seem to have turned against them. Half their bait lost in the first hour, they are left two alternatives. Find the ship or row to a new spot. But the weather has decided for them. Broadcasts of squall warnings from the supply ship Gilles Jens force Captain Silva to call them back. The fog closing in again, their return must be instantaneous, or they might not make it back at all. Battling a conspiracy of elements, one by one, they appear from the mist. The current up to five knots, rowing is difficult, and diminishing visibility distorts the distance they must travel. On sound alone, each man finds home. And soon, all hands on the José Alberto are accounted for. Hello, Senor de Bofiage, Senor de Bofiage, Senor de Bofiage. A few miles away, Captain Ramallera of the San Rafael has not been so fortunate. All have returned but one, a young fisherman without experience, who probably rowed too far. By shortwave, all neighboring vessels are alerted to continue their signals and remain on the lookout. that one man is felt by all, most deeply by his captain. It was his word that sent the man out. He will bear the burden of not being able to bring him back in. The dory can endure for days. The man cannot. If swamped, the dory will rise again to the surface. But in frigid water, the man will not. Searching the fog, each man sees an image of himself, rowing without direction to a ship that never appears. In such fog, even sound plays tricks, bouncing off invisible walls till its direction is incomprehensible. granted a reprieve. The sight of the dory brings great relief, but all on deck are aware that before the voyage is over, some among them will have entered the fog never to return. For straying so far in the fog, the young doryman will be disciplined. He might be made to stand on the deck for a period of hours. He might be prohibited from fishing the next day. An example only for the other men. His lesson has been learned. Having lived through a doryman's most feared experience with the sea, he knows he is fortunate just to be able to fear its happening again.